Okay, so imagine this. You wake up in the morning full of energy and positivity only to find out that there are no computers anywhere in the world. So you try to con- Google your problem. But you can't really browse the internet without a computer, can you? Guess we'll go back to the mines. Books aside. Right now computers are everywhere we go and look, from gaming to hospitals to school and so on. But how did this happen? How did computers appear in the first place? How do they work? What will computers become in the future? This is exactly what I'm going to explain in this video. By the way, this topic is huge, I'm gonna go through it quickly and give a brief explanation about everything I can. I'm gonna miss some details, I know, I can't include everything and I want to keep it as simple as possible. Starting off with the Industrial Revolution in the 17th century. In such a big revolution, maximum organization was key. For that, people used tables with data of pretty much anything. For example, interest rates. There were a lot of calculations involved, calculations made by professionals called at the time computers. However, they made mistakes. It's human to make mistakes, mistakes make us human. The world would have been better off without those mistakes though. A man called Charles Babbage came up with a solution. In 1822, he built a machine which he called the Defense Engine. It looked like this and it was the first computing machine ever made. In its structure, it had moving parts. It was pretty much useless, by the way, even though he made another one which he called the analytical engine, which in fact he never finished. However, it doesn't matter. This was the first step in the vast world of computers. More and more people saw the potential of this machine, and we all know what followed. Progress, of course. From World War II, we all know about the Colossus machine used to crack Germany's Enigma machine, to history's biggest tech companies like Microsoft. In the meantime, computers even changed from those old silly gears and other metal parts to electrical circuits, and BOOM! Here we are, the present day. Now let's talk about how these computers work. No matter what computer, 200 years ago or NASA computer, they all perform four tasks. Input, storage, process, and output. Input is what is put in, taken in, or operated on by any process or system. For example, you're pressing on your mouse button to subscribe. That's input. Storage is the action or method of storing something for future use. You pressed the mouse button when the pointer was over the subscribe button. Your computer remembers that and it stores this information in memory. This is the memory I was talking about by the way. Process is a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. So the computer starts thinking, what does clicking on the subscribe button actually mean? It means they want to subscribe to this channel. And then the memory gives instructions to the processor on how to subscribe. This is the processor I was talking about by the way. It's also called CPU, it stands for Central Processing Unit. Output is the amount of something produced by a person, machine or industry. So the computer subscribes you to this channel. But how do you know that? It shows this beautiful button. Try clicking on the bell button as well. Nowadays computers work with wires and circuits. Let's talk about wires. Now wires can be either switched off or on. 0 or 1. Simple right? That's a bit. A bit can be either 0 or 1. Now that we got zeros and 1s, we can make that easy calculations with them by using circuits. Calculations like 0 plus 0 or 1 plus 1. You may be wondering how computers do things so fast with these calculations. There's really no secret. A computer doesn't have two wires and one circuit. It has tons of them. So it makes tons of basic calculations at once. Smaller circuits are also faster because the electricity needs to cover a shorter distance. And the cool part is that everything can be represented in numbers, including sounds and images. For example, this video you're watching right now. It's all numbers, man! Now let's talk about hardware and software. No, no, no. Hardware and software. Hardware is the physical part of the computer, the part which you can see, like the monitor, speakers, or that sweet NVIDIA GeForce 2080 RTX. Software is the logical part of the computer, the part which you can't see, like 
apps, code, and those zeros and ones we were talking about before. And what binds them together is an actual piece of software, the operating system. You've probably heard about Windows or Mac OS, those are examples of operating systems. Here are the functions of the operating system. The operating system is the program that tells other software of how to use the hardware. It controls everything, including other smaller programs, for example Steam. And in the present day, it is always multitask capable. It didn't used to be like that in the past, but now it is, and you should be thankful. That's pretty much it when it comes to how a computer works. Computers keep getting better and better, wires and circuits get smaller and smaller which allow electricity to move faster through them, fact that makes them even more powerful than the previous generation. And if they are small, it means that one can fit more in the same space. More wires mean more complex data. After that, there will be another generation which will become better than the newly created one and then hold up, we got a problem. If computer parts keep getting smaller and smaller, they will become the size of atoms, and due to laws of physics, we can't do that. I'm sorry to disappoint. This is because when we go smaller and smaller, strange laws of quantum physics interfere. In the quantum world, electrons can just teleport through closed wires, for example, which would mess up the whole computer. But why not? We have the solution. You may have heard about it, you may have not. Scientists have been developing a new technology. Quantum computers. This is very complicated stuff, but quantum computers are amazing. It's supposed to take advantage of the strange nature of the quantum world. Instead of bits, quantum computers use qubits, which strangely enough can be both 0 and 1 at the same time. Doing some math, we can deduce that a qubit is twice as efficient as a bit. Two qubits are four times as efficient as two bits. Three qubits are eight times as efficient as three bits. Numbers start to get huge using these powers of two. Ten qubits are 1024 times as efficient as 10 bits for example, and so on. A qubit is a two-level quantum system, for example a photon or a spin with a field. It can be both 0 and 1 in a state called superposition, however when they are measured, they pick one of the two values. Another cool property of qubits is entanglement, a sort of connection between two or more qubits which lets a person determine the output of an entangled qubit by analyzing the first one. I know this sounds like a sci-fi movie, but the potential is huge. Just as people realized what the potential of a computing machine was in the past, we are going through the exact same thing right now with compu quantum computing. And the reason why you should be excited is that you might have a quantum computer at your lifetime, a computer millions of times stronger than the one you are watching this video on. Not too excited though because there's still a long way to go. So that's it guys, you made it, you made it to the end of the video, congratulations, that's the world of computers summarized by a lot. Now of course, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, the bell button for notifications.